I lost my virginity when I was 12. Mm -hmm. And the guy I lost my virginity to was probably 35. Mm -hmm. Between, he was over 30, but yeah. he looked around 35. Because mm -hmm. he had a daughter who was my age. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. And so is it right for a 12-year-old mm -hmm. to lose their virginity At that to end, a man? did you even know what, what you were doing? I knew what was going on, uh -huh. but I had no control. She said, I don't want a model. I don't want a movie star. You don't have to win the lotto. Oh, I want you to win my heart. Yeah. She said, I just want someone true. She said, I just want someone one smoke with me, baby. Lay with me, baby. Laugh with me, baby. I just want the simple thing. What's up, guys? I know uh, I haven't uploaded any video of late. I've been having technical issues, but I guess I'm back now. Today, I have an amazing guest. She is a mother. I don't want to say so much and I don't want to dive into the interview. So today I'm trying something new. Uh, I, I want us to, to just have an icebreaker before we start the interview. So hi Riziki. Hello. I hope you're ready for this. <laughs> eh? You can relax, be yeah, free. Eh? Be yeah, free. So today we have, I have seven questions. Mm -hmm. As you can see, each, each uh, bowl has, has, a, has a number. Mm -hmm. And it has a treat inside and a question inside. Mm -hmm. So I'm going. You're going to pick only three three numbers. Mm -hmm. Then you tend to you yeah you can pick. Then we tend to see what what's inside and what does the question say. So whatever pops up uh, what pops up in your mind, you can just yeah tell us. Feel free and be as open as possible. So after I answer the question, what uh -huh. determines whether I get it right or wrong? No, this one is it's just uh, it's just random questions about you. Okay. So there's no right or wrong answer. Yes. Sour. Uh huh. So we start. Yes, we can start. <laughs> nice. So I read it out. Yes. What's the worst thing you ever did as a child and got away with it? Uh-huh. Eh, as a child, I did so many things. Just tell us one. Um, okay, so I remember when I was about two. Uh-huh. I, I was a very disturbed child, if I can say that. Uh-huh. So, I went to the neighbor's house. Uh-huh. Found a small baby. And I beat the baby on his hand. Why? I don't know. <laughs> It just I, I think I found the baby so cute and cuddly and I wanted to taste. Uh -huh. So I beat him, he started crying and I ran away. And what did the mother do? She wasn't there. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> so no one and I was no told, one knows this story. I think my sister knows because she's the one who came to get me. Uh -huh. But I can't remember what happened. What I just remember is I went, uh -huh. beat the baby's hand over here, uh -huh. and then I took off. Uh, okay. You can tell us what's the treat inside. So just Oreo. just to be safe, you can open and have a bite as we continue. Okay. So. Huh? Okay, Penda, this thing is... Same here, same here. If I wasn't fasting, Oh, but you can eat yours later. I'll eat mine later, definitely. You mm -hmm. can just take mm -hmm. a bite and then we continue. Pick another number. You can leave it open since now we know whatever is in number two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Pick any other number. Number five. Mm, gummy. <laughs> <laughs> As a mom, you have to know all these things. I know. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Hmm. What is the worst advice you've ever received? Worst advice. Mm -hmm. hmm. There's a lot of bad advice out there. But which is the worst you've ever received? Kutoa lock. Kutoa lock. Yeah. Eh? That's the worst. But why? What to say? Kutoa lock 
inasaidia because ukitoa lock mm -hmm. you become dependent on alcohol mm -hmm. you see yeah so ukikunywa uh -huh. you're supposed to face the consequences the next day mm -hmm. go through the hangover mm -hmm. so you can be able to like gain that strength Mm -hmm. without necessarily depending on alcohol. Okay. So Riziki, how have you been? I've been fine. How is this pandemic treating you? So far so good. And the lockdown? How to say it? Especially you, you stay along Mombasa Road, right? Your yeah. traffic. Traffic uh -huh. is manageable. Uh -huh. It's all about uh, time management. Mm -hmm. So come on in the Mahali, mm -hmm. I usually leave early. Mm -hmm. Like today I left the house at eight forty five. Mm -hmm. Finish everything, uh -huh. and by three, uh -huh. I have to be on my way back. Yeah, so time management. If you don't mind, you can you can just tell us about about your son, about your family, and just your mental health at large. Sawa. So, um, let's just start now with my son. Yes. So when I was twenty. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with a certain condition, mm -hmm. reproductive health uh, issue. Yeah. And uh, I think in 2014, I went for surgery. Mm -hmm. So thereafter, the doctor told me that it would be prudent to have a baby mm -hmm. sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Because in case um, the condition spreads, and they might have to take out now the uterus, ovaries and everything, mm -hmm. I will have already had children. Mm -hmm. So um, generally my plan was to have a baby by 25. I met a guy, mm -hmm. we fell in love mm -hmm. when I was 21, there about. Yeah. And then he went to Australia. Mm -hmm. So I was left here alone mm -hmm. and I thought uh, we could actually like even if it would take me going to Australia to have a baby then I was for it but in 2014 mm -hmm. this guy went quiet especially now when I told him I was going through surgery and all those things at that time you weren't pregnant no, uh -huh. no. and he at that time were you practicing sex no because uh -huh. I was in a long distance relationship yes so the guy just went quiet uh -huh. And so I decided to move on with my life, but mm -hmm. my heart was still with him. So 2015, 2016, we hadn't talked for about two years. Mm -hmm. I had tried reaching him, but he no had cut me off. Yeah. yeah. So I just decided, why don't I just have a child? Mm -hmm. And I had this friend who we used to go to work together in the morning, Nini, we used to talk. So, I was just like, ah, see, we can just have a child and then we'll figure out the rest later. Were you in love with this person? No, mm -hmm. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted a child. And at that time, were you a virgin? No, uh -huh. I wasn't. So you had that tough talk with him and told him that you wanted a child? Yeah, uh -huh. he was actually not willing to have a baby then. Uh -huh. But... Me, I just went ahead and did what I wanted. So to be honest, there was selfish. Uh -huh. I planned, so I tried in November, it didn't work. Uh -huh. Tried again in December because I was counting the dates. And so for him, he wasn't, he wasn't being safe Men are on, weak. On, on his part. <laughs> Men are weak. Uh -huh. When it comes to that, uh -huh. he may not want to have a child, but he won't know how to pull out. Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. and he won't know that you're ovulating. Yeah. So him, he just went on with life as usual, mm -hmm. and me, I knew what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah, and immediately I got pregnant. Um, now we obviously started having issues because he didn't want, mm -hmm. and I was okay with it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had my baby. Mm -hmm. Was uh, he in the picture? Was he supporting? He was there. Mm -hmm. Physically, he was there, mm -hmm. very supportive emotionally, but on and off, because mm -hmm. he had issues of his own. Mm -hmm. um, and, and at that time, was mm -hmm. your mother okay? Were you were you able to finance for the baby, or you yeah. you, you 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 were able to finance? Yeah. Or with the My help of your me. with the help of your mother? Yeah, because the mm -hmm. clinics I used to attend 
I paid for my clinics mm -hmm. and then now going to give birth my mom's son who paid the bill. Mm -hmm. um, so the guy was there physically <laughs> but financially he was not there. And was he working? Was he, was he stable enough to support you and the kid? On and off. Like he'd get a job, uh -huh. um, then he wouldn't have a salary. Mara, he always had stories. Mm -hmm. So I can't really tell you whether he genuinely had a job or he just used to dress up and go. You see? Yeah. Because I can't tell. There was a lot of deception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I didn't depend on him for anything and I didn't expect much from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had my baby and as you can imagine, as time went on, mm -hmm. things got worse because he was not... The mom, mm -hmm. the guy's mom, mm -hmm. was uh, buying us stuff like food. Kidogo, kidogo too. At that time, were you living with your with your mom, or you you were living with this guy? Um. So I had my own place. Uh huh. Just before I got pregnant, mm -hmm. and this guy came to encroach, and that is how mm -hmm. <laughs> I decided. Okay, since you're staying in my house, mm -hmm. I'm going to have a baby. You see. Uh huh. He you told have, him that. No, uh -huh. I told myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and were you the one financing for everything? Yeah. So mwanamme kazi yake tu ni kukaa kwa nyumba. Eh? Alikuwa anaenda job. Eh? Anarudi. Eh? Anasema mara hajalipwa, mara sijui ametumia pesa na nini. Uh -huh. Lakini Friday, uh -huh. he always went out with his boys. Leaving you alone. Yeah. Uh, just at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which me, I was okay with that because me, I love my space. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't be bothered about a guy, by the way. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm very liberal. So, wakati niliona siwezi kumweka, I decided to move back to my mom's house. Because yeah. I knew there, he wouldn't come to encroach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and how so, did you tell him to, like you were going back to your mother's house? I asked him for rent uh -huh. the first time uh, he gave me a thousand bob and the rent I think I was supposed to pay 20k <laughs> so uh -huh. now the second time I told him later in your tires at a common 10k uh, he didn't say anything mm -hmm. so <clears throat> I told him because he's not able to pay rent and everything mm -hmm. even me I cannot manage so me I just told him I think on 20, 24th, 24th, 25th there, told him, Mimi, 28th, mm -hmm. kwa mother. Mm -hmm. So, you, Chipange. kujua nanyo utafanya. Uh -huh. Kama unataka kubaki na nyumba. Uh -huh. So he said, so even me, I'll go back to my mom. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. I went to my mom's, he went to his mom. At that time, you, had a, you hadn't delivered yet for you? No, I, I think I was like two months pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and how did your mother take it? She took it well because before I got pregnant, I told her I was, I intended to have a baby. So she knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and she did not, you know, like traditional parents will tell you, get married, like follow the system. Uh, look for someone, fall in love, get married, then have a baby. No, my mom didn't. She just she's been very understanding yes and given the fact that she knew what i was going through now with my other guy in australia mm -hmm. i think she understood where i was coming from because we had this conversation and i told her me mom i've given up yeah but i want a child so mm -hmm. i can't promise you i'll bring you a son-in-law mm -hmm. but a grandchild later. because mm -hmm. even my mom went through a very emotionally abusive marriage mm -hmm. with my dad. Mm -hmm. So for her, she's not, she knows how it is, you know, yeah. and she will not push anyone to go into a relationship where they'll suffer. So she understood and she told me to do whatever I deemed fit. Mm -hmm. And she's been supportive all through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even with bringing up my son, mm -hmm. very supportive, very. She spends so much time, even now she's with him. What exactly did you suffer from? Um, okay, so since childhood, uh -huh. I have OCD, mm -hmm. ADHD, mm -hmm. which has led to depression. Mm -hmm. OCD basically is just characterized by obsessive, intrusive thoughts. Yeah. 
um, which leads to repetitive now compulsions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, like if I'm seated here and I feel like this kitty is not clean, mm -hmm. you know, I can start cleaning it. Mm -hmm. Then um, I'll keep on cleaning it after every few minutes. Yeah. So another um, characteristic of OCD is um, uh, fear and mm -hmm. depression mm -hmm. and guilt. Because mm -hmm. like if for example I have done some work mm -hmm. and I feel like I haven't done it right, mm -hmm. I'll feel guilty. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. If the house is not cleaned today, mm -hmm. I'll feel guilty. Why? Mm -hmm. You know? And do you punish yourself? Yeah, before I used to. Mm -hmm. But I stopped. I would it had gotten so bad because I would hit myself, you know. Mm -hmm. I just inflict pain on myself mm -hmm. to feel better. Yeah. Yeah. So, but nowadays I'm on medication and uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to manage my thoughts. You know, like even when someone mops and <laughs> someone else steps, mm -hmm. I'll be like, okay, it's never that serious. Yeah. Like nothing bad is going to happen. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And um, depression, how yeah. how did you how did that like affect you in general your relationships, even with your ma with your mom, with your family at large? Depression, um okay, so it started when I was very young. Yes. Around five. Mm -hmm. That's from when I can remember. Um I was diagnosed juicy juicy, uh -huh. but now when you know I explained all this to the psychiatrist and the psychologists, they mm -hmm. were able to tell like when it started yeah but i had those symptoms mm -hmm. back then mm -hmm. and my biggest symptom is low self-esteem mm -hmm. um lack of motivation mm -hmm. you know yeah just feeling inferior and feeling like i'm not part of the society mm -hmm. um, and it's mainly because my parents split up when i was very young mm -hmm. and so i felt like obviously the family was not sour there was something wrong because yeah. all my friends had father mother yeah then me i have my mom mm -hmm. then my dad he has another wife okay they have other kids then there's that really clear division of mm -hmm. them and us you see yeah. so it made us feel inferior because at the time my dad had money mm -hmm. and we were struggling Mm -hmm. So we missed out on a lot of things and we we didn't get his attention actually. Mm -hmm. Even let alone the money, the attention. That's the the father the figure. Thing. Yeah, his attention because uh -huh. there was a shift. You know, we used to be really tight when we were living together. Yeah. Then suddenly one day he's kicked us out. Mm -hmm. We are struggling. We go talk to him. His mood has changed. He's not talking to me the way he used to talk to me. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So I really felt that, and especially when now my step bro was born, mm -hmm. around 1998, if I'm not wrong, mm -hmm. my dad adored him. And then as we were like sidelined, a mm -hmm. good one. So I kept wondering, and <clears throat> so growing up. Mm -hmm. I always felt that abandonment, mm -hmm. inferiority, and I just wanted to be by myself. Mm -hmm. I remember in school, one day when I was in class five, mm -hmm. my dad came to pay school fees. Mm -hmm. So as he was coming to pay school fees, um, he would obviously have a chat with me for like five minutes at lunchtime. Yeah. So I saw his car coming into the gate and my friends were like, hey, Riziki, there's your dad. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, I got anxious mm -hmm. and I was terrified. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to approach him. So one of my friends was like, Hey Riziki, why are you so afraid of your dad? Mm -hmm. He's your dad, you should be running to him. And I was like, I don't, I, I can't. Yeah. So I actually used to push myself to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And I remember I would go, he'd say hi nicely. Him, he was, I don't know. Sometimes he'd just be nice and some other times he'd just be really cold. Mm -hmm. So I remember that day he said hi to me nicely, he told me, okay, I've come to pay your fees, nini, nini, we'll talk, okay, bye, bye. Mm -hmm. That was it. You know, yeah. there was no emotional attachment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Up to date. Yeah, up to date. Uh -huh. Because um, 
my dad has his I don't know how to explain his character but mm -hmm. um he's got a very strong commanding presence mm -hmm. and he can be very intimidating. Mm -hmm. So there are times when he will walk in and you won't know what to say to him because you're terrified. Yeah. And then once you sit with him and chat a little bit, you'll warm up, mm -hmm. but there's still that energy he yeah. gives off that's very intimidating. Too many, mm -hmm. too many, even mm -hmm. to his sisters, mm -hmm. too many. But maybe when he's had a double whiskey, he warms up. Mm -hmm. He's not so terrified. And how is your relationship with your mom? It's very good. It's very good. Yeah. So, uh, that relationship with your father, I believe it really hurt you at that mm -hmm. time. Now, can you say you have overcome it? I'm indifferent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But because no grudge. Hey, even me, sometimes I mm -hmm. don't know. Sometimes I feel like there's a grudge and sometimes mm -hmm. I just let go. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I went for therapy and that's what we talked about. Mm -hmm. And I was telling the therapist, I have learned to understand him mm -hmm. for who he is and to take him for who he is. Mm -hmm. And you know, you cannot hold on to your past yeah. because the past is in the past. Yeah. You have to accept and mm -hmm. move on. Mm -hmm. So if I can just be totally honest, there's mm -hmm. no grudge, mm -hmm. but there's no, there are no feelings. Yeah. Because... I can't have expectations from him. Mm -hmm. If I set high expectations in him, mm -hmm. he won't come through. Yeah. Like if I go visit him and I'm happy, nini, nini, he might not be happy to see me because yeah. he has issues of his own, mm -hmm. uh, mental and emotional, yeah. which we've never discussed, mm -hmm. but it is what I have observed. Mm -hmm. So sometimes he's in a good mood, sometimes he's just low. Yeah. And you cannot expect to get a warm reception from him all the time. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I just decided to be indifferent. Mm -hmm. um, when I see him, mm -hmm. I usually hurt a lot because mm -hmm. I wish I could hug him, but I can't go near him. You yeah, know, yeah. it's very hard. Mm -hmm. It's like one side of me wants to be nice to him and the other side is telling me, you. Mm -hmm. You know, because if I get close to him and then he hurts me again, yeah. then what, you know? And don't you fear that your son will also have the same, the same, like, feelings towards the father? Okay, so for my son and the dad, it's, uh -huh. it's quite different. Yes. Um, despite the fact that we are not lovers or whatever. Yeah. You co parents. Uh, we are friends, yeah. Uh -huh. Let me tell you what happened with this guy. <laughs> After I had my son, mm -hmm. he started dating another chick. Mm -hmm. Then he got her pregnant. Mm -hmm. So he has another child. Mm -hmm. Almost see, same age with your son. I think they are two years apart. Uh -huh. I'm not wrong. She, I'm a one and a half years apart. I uh -huh. don't know. So, yeah, two years. So I realized this guy, even him, by the way, he has mental health issues because mm -hmm. even him right now as we speak, um, he's going through that transition. Mm -hmm. He figured out his problem and um, he's getting whatever solutions he needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, I just decided to understand him as he is and to take him as he is. Mm -hmm. So with his other baby mama, I don't have a problem. Sometimes we talk, mm -hmm. uh, we compare notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the same way he's disregarded us is the same way he's disregarded them. Aye, uh -huh. And I told that chick that mm -hmm. it's because this guy has a problem. Mm -hmm. So unless he solves his problem, he's not mm -hmm. going to be able to take care of his kids. Yeah. So the best thing we can do is to support him not judge him mm -hmm. and to allow him to have a relationship with his kids mm. so me i told him he can come see my son anytime mm -hmm. and are they close 
very wanapendana mm-hmm. and um i usually take him like if he's not able to come like no he's not able to come mm-hmm. i usually take him in fact tomorrow i'm taking him mm-hmm. to visit him mm-hmm. they spend time they talk ni 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 i will never trash my my son's father to your son yeah never yeah and i will never separate them yeah. never because he's his father and he has a role to play in that child's life true me i have my part him he has his part yeah. whether he contributes financially or not mm-hmm. i'll still allow him to see his son because yeah. children they don't know about bills they don't know about where their clothes are coming from yeah. and that's not their problem it's ours yeah so if the dad cannot provide mm-hmm. i will provide mm-hmm. and the day the dad is able to provide let him provide mm-hmm. and if he is never able to provide mm-hmm. then let it be yeah. at the end of the day what matters is that he has a relationship with his son mm-hmm. and they are okay thing you'd like to air anything i haven't asked anything you'd like to share with our viewers mm, about mental health about mental health yeah okay so basically yes these mental health issues mm-hmm. usually emerge from trauma yeah and trauma is caused when a part of the brain you know suffers that trauma because of an event that has occurred yeah and some events are taken for granted like you know children mm-hmm. are very attentive yeah they are very attentive and they process everything they see mm-hmm. so as adults we must safeguard and protect their mental health by exposing them to the right things yeah and if they happen to see something that is not appropriate for them mm-hmm. you have to explain it to them yeah others they'll be lo- left with a lot of questions mm-hmm. which need answers Mm-hmm. Like I wish when I was young mm-hmm. someone had explained to me what had happened between my parents mm-hmm. and told me you know in a way that I would understand yeah. that they would never get back together because for the longest time mm-hmm. I thought one day they would yeah. and when they didn't I got more depressed mm-hmm. you see yeah um children should never be exposed to sex they mm-hmm. should never be exposed to alcohol mm-hmm. drugs mm-hmm. or violence Mm-hmm. ever protect your child mm-hmm. and that includes abusive language yeah. it doesn't matter if it's in the home or outside mm-hmm. if your child comes home asha and tells you mami nilisikia mtu ametukanana the f word mm-hmm. sit down with that child and explain to them that that is a bad word mm-hmm. and that they should not say it Yeah. If they say, well, people out there are saying it, even my friends in school say it, why are you telling me not to say? It? Yeah. You have to explain to them that in the world there is good and evil. Yeah. And you have to choose between mm-hmm. good and evil. Mm-hmm. And if you choose evil, mm-hmm. you'll end up, you know, suffering the consequences. Yeah. If you choose the right way, you will reap good benefits. You yeah. see? So these are things we need to indoctrinate in our children from a very early age. Yeah. and also like so do you trauma. think your mental ish, uh, mental uh, health issue started mm-hmm. when you were young from yeah. the traumatic events that happened yeah uh-huh. also didn't tell you uh-huh. something that i have written about but i'm i don't know i'm not comfortable talking about it but i just have to say it yes i lost my virginity when i was 12 Mm-hmm. And the guy I lost my virginity to was probably 35. Mm-hmm. Between he was over 30, but yeah. he looked around 35. Mm-hmm. Cuz he had a daughter who was my age. Mm-hmm. You see? Yeah. And so is it right for a 12-year-old mm-hmm. to lose their virginity? At that time did you even know what what you were doing? I knew what was going on. Uh-huh. But I had no control in terms of This guy <coughs> I don't know how he manipulated me. Mm-hmm. Is it someone you knew then? Yeah. It uh-huh. by the sexual predators are always people in the community that you think are not the ones. Mhm. Yeah. He was someone mm-hmm. who people knew. Mhm. And so what he would do, he would whenever I was walking home from the market or something, mm-hmm. he would 
he would ask to give me a push. We used to call it that. Mm -hmm. So he'd escort me using a back route. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time, the, I think the second time he gave me a push, mm -hmm. he kissed me and I, I had never been kissed by a man, you can imagine. Yeah. And I felt, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm a grown up. Mm -hmm. Because this man finds me attractive and he's kissed me and he's told me he loves me. Yeah. Pole pole, he used to cut here me. Because mm -hmm. every time he'd see me, he'd maybe, he'd talk to me, give me a push and then, you know, show me affection that I wasn't getting anywhere else. Yeah. You see? Yeah. And that attention. And so one day, with a soda, mm -hmm. he managed to get me into a room mm -hmm. and take my virginity. Mm -hmm. And I think he dragged me. Mm -hmm. I don't know because it was also hazy mm -hmm. but that's how I lost my virginity and did you tell anyone afterwards I didn't tell anyone uh -huh. God knows I couldn't talk about it mm -hmm. but my mom and sister found out mm -hmm. when it was too late mm -hmm. and now you know obviously they were angry yeah. and they wanted like they issued a manhunt for the guy they're telling him they'll get him arrested mm -hmm. and me i'm thinking why are you telling saying this this guy loves me yeah. you know and they're like no you're a child i'm like but he loves me mm -hmm. you know um what i didn't know is that this guy was just using me mm -hmm. and he had a wife yeah. you see and how many girls has he done that to yeah so another thing is for parents to feel that emotional gap. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, neglect your child emotionally and expect mm -hmm. that uh, they will be okay. Mm -hmm. And that is what sexual predators use. Yeah, yeah they, they take advantage of that because, oh, my mom is mkali, my dad is mkali, we don't even talk, nini, nini. Mm -hmm. So they start talking to your kids about, you know, the things yeah. they tell them to be free ask questions come to my house anytime mm -hmm. i have ps i have mm -hmm. this you know yeah. i have movies you can watch and mm -hmm. uh, you can talk to me about anything do you have a boyfriend no mm -hmm. oh really mm -hmm. you know now you're old enough you know yeah and they are friendly mm -hmm. you see yeah. and that's what kids are very vulnerable yeah. especially when you see someone in their teens just because someone is experiencing body changes doesn't mean that the mind has matured. True. Yeah? yeah. So you'll see a 16 year old who looks like she's 22. Mm -hmm. Like in the mind, Ijafika. Uh, Haja mature. Ata kidogo. Uh -huh. So that one is very easy to manipulate. They are yeah. gullible. Yeah. You tell them two, three things, tell them, let's go drink a soda, she'll go. Yeah. Like for me, how I oblige to this guy is. I was afraid of causing a sin. Mm -hmm. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, okay, sour. Mm -hmm. We sat in a car, hotel, a cafe, yeah. drank soda. Mm -hmm. Then he told me, I'm mm -hmm. not comfortable. You're not comfortable. See, we go to the back. Mm -hmm. We have some rooms where you can even relax. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, sour. I was scared. You yeah. see? Everything is just sour, sour, sour. Mm -hmm. Then you know he's telling you he, he loves you, something out of skiangi. But then, to be honest, I don't know if you got it uh -huh. from your parents <laughs> growing up. Uh -huh. But us, uh uh. There's no affection at all. Me, those three words I've heard from men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear from men who want to chip on me. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So, um, it's important for parents to have an emotional attachment to their kids, mm -hmm. to tell them that they love them, mm -hmm. they value them. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your child's value is not based upon how they perform in school. It's not based upon Ooh, what you're providing for them. Yeah. Yeah. Your child's value is based upon the fact that they're your child. It's yeah. a birthright yeah. for them to be loved by the parent. Yeah, and say it. Yes. Yeah, and say it, oh, yeah. you know. Even if it's, I, I don't know how it's awkward for parents to say they love their children. Because mm -hmm. me, I say to there my There are two son, things. <laughs> uh, say that they love you and I'm sorry. It's Boom. very difficult for parents. Do you eh? get this? <laughs> Maybe I'm sorry. That is very hard. Wow. Eh? But I love it. I think I get it in a different way. Okay. They wouldn't say it like per se, like I love you, mm -hmm. but they'd show it. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, mm -hmm. uh, now we need to say it. Yeah. Um, cause there's. Please let me just say one last thing. Uh -huh. I watched a video yesterday mm -hmm. about uh, there's this trend on TikTok mm -hmm. where you're supposed to to choke yourself to do the blackout challenge. Uh huh. Where you're supposed to choke yourself until you pass out. Uh huh. I haven't seen it. Uh huh. Yeah. So there's a 12 year old boy who choked himself and died. until he passed out, and now he's in hospital on life support. What? The parents were coming out to say, well, uh -huh. this is serious. Yeah. So you know we need to monitor our children closely, mm -hmm. to be very attentive to what they are doing online, mm -hmm. and. If it means setting up firewalls, mm -hmm. set up firewalls. Mm -hmm. Let them not have access to social media yeah. at a very young age. Yeah. Because they will find sexual predators there who will tell them they love them. Yeah. So you, if you're not telling your kids you love them and you care for them, you know, yeah. and you understand them, mm -hmm. then someone else will. Yeah. And that is how some girls in, I don't know, those girls who went missing, a while back yeah <laughs> you remember i remember <laughs> yeah that is how uh -huh. they were able to like these are adults who Ebu manipulated them yeah yeah and these girls looked old i mean not old mature yeah but they're over still 18 kids. Yeah. yeah but they are still kids so they are easily vulnerable they are mm -hmm. gullible mm -hmm. yeah Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Riziki, thank you so much for sharing your story. Till next time, I hope I'll be uploading every single week. And yeah, please like, share, and definitely subscribe. Till next time. Thank you so much, Riziki. Most welcome.